All right, guys, welcome. I hope you're doing great. Let's have a look at uh, the page 10 in your book, and uh, it is the topic 1B. As you see, the, the name of this uh, topic is called Past Tenses Contrast. And when I contrast something, I want to compare it with the other. So, if you look at uh, the past tenses that you should already know, we're talking about a combination of tenses like past simple, past continuous, and past perfect. If we translate it, it can be said as minuli prosti, minuli prubehovi, a minuli sertitumi. We can put these tenses together in a sentence. They will make a very big difference in our idea that we want to tell other people. Let's have a look at the first idea here. Past simple and past simple. So, when I tell you some sentence uh, that will have past simple and past simple, I am giving a sequence of events. If I translate the, word, the words here, sequence means that the, uh, the, the actions happen one after another. One, two, three, four. To znamená, jedná se o chronologické, chronologické akce, které se odehrává jedna za druhou. Dáme si příklad, let's have an example. Uh, I went home. I took a shower. So now the question is, um, is it already finished or not finished? I'm, talk I'm giving you a story and this story has already finished. So by the time I'm telling you this sentence, I am not at home and I am not uh, taking a shower right now and I am not watching Netflix at the moment. I am telling you a story, right? So this is action one, this is action two, this is action three. One, two, and three. If you look at the timeline, one, I went home, the second, I took a shower, and the third, I watched Netflix. All these three are in a clear past from the context that we are describing here. I know when it happened. It can be yesterday, it can be uh, a week ago. But the both speakers, when I am speaking to my friend and my friend listens to me, we both know the time we're talking about. Maybe it was last weekend. We don't know here because I am not saying it in the sentence. I did not say anything here. But uh, when I say that, I'm telling you that it is finished and it happened at a given time. The given time is probably here in the context. And the context, let's say here, can be last weekend. So I can say it in a sentence or I know it from the context, I know from the situation that uh, we are describing. So as I said, number one, number two, number three. So you should remember guys, I use past simple in a sentence and if I have more, then I am giving you a chronological order of actions. Chronologický řád těch věcí. Takže pokud já použiju jenom past simple ve větě, potom všechny akce v té větě následuje jedna za druhou. Takhle to slyší angličan, ok? In the Czech language we don't really have this kind of logic. And this is why it can be a little problem for a lot of people. Let's have a look. So this was the past simple, past simple. Let's see the second combination where I put past simple and past continuous together. Let me give you the example, number two. Past simple plus past continuous. To znamená, dáme dohromady oba časy jsou minulé a jeden z nich je prostý, jeden z nich je minulý. Alright, let's have a look at how it works. I saw, I saw my friend while I was going home. 
když si to přeložíme, uviděl jsem svého kamaráda, když jsem šel do In the Czech language, we don't really make a big difference if it's uh, happening for a long time or short time. Me seeing my friend happened in a very short time. So I would just say, I saw my friend with the past symbol, and here I have past continuous. If you look at the timeline, it will look like this. I was going home, this action was taking some time, and then something entered this action. Something came in, I saw my friend. I saw my friend. Don't forget everyone, that at the moment I'm speaking, it is already finished. So, I'm here, I'm in now, and I'm describing two actions in the past that are already finished. From, again, from the context, I can know when, but at least I know it's finished. There is no effect on uh, the current situation. And I know that something was happening for a long time. I was going home. I was in the process of going home. And then I saw my friend. It just happened very quickly. And it happened while, while I was going home. Now, I can also say the same sentence. And I can switch it, and I can say, I was going home, I was going home when I saw my friend. This sentence is exactly the same, but you should see that I have I used the order in a different way. It doesn't matter if you want to say the process first and then the one-time action that came into it. Or if you want to tell me the one-time action and then the process. The only thing that differs here is the conjunction. If you want to tell me the one-time action that will come later, then you should use when. This is for one-time action. This is for the simple. Alright? For past simple in our situation. And while is for uh, describing the process. So after while I use continuous and after when I use the one-time action. So again, I'm telling you a story and this time I'm describing that one thing was happening in the background. I was going home, alright? And then something came into the middle of this background action and that was me seeing my friend. Okay, this is the second situation. The second possible situation for using past tenses. Now, let's see how I can combine how I can combine the third situation. I can use past continuous and past continuous together. All right. I'm telling you a story, and I'm giving you two actions that were happening at the same time, and they both took some time. Let's have a look at uh, how it works. The first one is here, and the second one can be here. So, I was taking a shower while, uh, let's say, the telephone. The telephone was ringing. So, I am not taking a shower now, and the phone is not ringing right now. We both know that this is finished. Because at the moment I'm speaking, those both actions are finished. We are in the past. That means that these two actions were happening for some time. The first one is me taking the shower. Obviously, the phone started ringing after I went into the shower, and it stopped ringing when I, before I left the shower. So this one is the telephone ringing, okay? Telephone was ringing. And then uh, I was taking a shower. I was taking a shower. Okay? Now, I can say the same thing in the previous uh, context. I can say I was taking a shower when the telephone rang, and this would be the past simple. To znamená, já jsem se zprchoval, když telefon zazvonil. My bychom v češtině použili vidím v tomhle, 
si to trošku dáme do kontextu. Uh, když řeknu, I was taking a shower while when the telephone rang, pokud použiju jenom přítomný uh, minulý prostý, potom se bavíme o tom, že ten telefon zazvonil. Ne, Nezdůraznuju, že to trvalo nějakou dobu. Chci říct, že ten telefon zazvonil, zatímco já jsem byl v té strašně. Okay? And if I say, I was taking a shower while the telephone was ringing, já jsem se sprchoval, když ten telefon zvonil, ne zazvonil, ale zvonil. This is what we would say in Czech. You see that our logic in our language is very different from this. It depends if you want to uh, tell me that it was happening for some time or not. Okay? You can just say the telephone rang. All right? The, that's fine. But look, the meaning is a little bit different here. Fine. So this is another possibility. Now let's have a look at the most difficult one, I think, for Czechs. And I hope that you studied it very well last year. You are in the third year, and at the end of the second year, you should have studied the, pre the past perfect, uh, There are many possibilities for this, but the one we need to remember is uh, number four, past, simple, and past, perfect. All right, when I put these two tenses together, I am giving you a different order of things that happened. As you remember, if I just use past simple and past simple and past simple, these actions are happening in a chronological order. They are happening one by one. The first action, the second action, the third action. Now, if I want to put present past perfect in it, that means the order is not there. The order has changed. So, for example, uh, the house was in a mess because we had had a party. Když to přeložíme, ten dům, náš dům, the, the, the house, náš dům byl v nepořádku, protože jsme měli akci, měli jsme nějakou party. Now here's the thing. What happened first? Right? I should remember, if I only use past simple, then this, this would be the first action, all right? and this would be the second action. But as we know, we had the party first. So that's why we must say past perfect here. If you look at, the, if you look at this, then we have number one, right? number two. This is what I say, but what really happened is the other way. So I want to say number two and number one. The house was in a mess. This is in my sentence. The house was in a mess because we had had a party. But the thing is, I cannot. I can say that, but I must make sure that I use the correct tense because the party happened first. Protože to bylo jen před minulý čas. Protože se to stalo ještě před tím minulým časem, který jsem já zmínil jako první. Okay? And this is the house was in a mess. So here we had a party. And the house was in a mess. Okay? The house was then in a mess. To znamená, kdybych to chtěl říct po pořadě, tak mi stačí použít jednoduše minulý prostý. We had a party, minulý prostý. Měli jsme nějakou akci, je to skončený děj. A díky tomu, že jsme tu akci měli, kvůli tomu máme celý náš dům v nepořádku. To znamená, První byla akce, pak byl nepořádek. Pokud já řeknu akci na prvním místě ve větě, stačí mi minulý prostě. We had a party and the house was in a mess. But, what I want to say first now, is that the house was in a mess. I, I wanted to tell you that, oh, I came into my house, the house was in a mess. Oh, and it was in a mess because we had had a party. We had had a party. So, it can look strange. And in your real life, you can actually live without the past perfect. But you always have to make sure that if you don't want to use this, you must tell me the story in, a, in sequence. How it went, one, two, three, and four. If you destroy this uh, order, and you tell me the first action that happened later in the past, 
then I must make sure to use the past perfect. Right? So both these uh, sentences here are correct. Right? And they mean the same thing. It's just that uh, in here, I'm telling you the first action here that happened later. This is why I must make sure that this action here, the party, happened first, or had happened first, so that the speaker knows the, uh, the party happened first and then uh, the house was in a mess as a result. All right. Now, I hope that it's a little bit clear now. Uh, you will find some example sentences also in, uh, in your reading and in the theory. I will ask you to do some exercises from, from the book. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in Google Classroom. One last thing I think that we should discuss maybe uh, the form, but I'm sure that you know it already, at least you should know it. So let's have a look at uh, how we form it. Past simple, right? Past simple. It can be regular or irregular. The regular one, I just add ED plus ED, because Y will become I, or I can just add D, right? Then, the regular one, I must remember. I must remember. There is no other way. You simply have to remember. For example, go, went. Alright? Now, if I use it in negative, I say I didn't go. So the past, the past here, will go to the auxiliary verb. Na pomocnem slove se se v otázkách a v zátlu objeví ten minulý čas, takže já řeknu I didn't go, nemůžu říct I didn't want, that would not be okay, because I can only use one past tense in this, and here I didn't go, the question would be did you go, alright, yes I did, no I didn't, this is on page 125, if you need to study in your previous book, in the red book, uh, the pre-intermediate book, I'm not sure if we find it in your book. I will check later, but uh, I'm sure that you still have your old books. You will find everything on page 125 in the pre-intermediate book. When we look at the uh, continuous, continuous is used with uh, was or were. This depends on the on the context, on the subject. So I say I was, or he, she, it, he, she, it was. Everything else is work, alright? And then I am here. So I was studying. Then the negative would be on the auxiliary verb. So I wasn't studying. Studying, alright? Then the question would be were you studying? The answer would be yes I was or no I wasn't. Just like the answer here would be yes I did, no I didn't. We have to say the auxiliary verb in the answer. The short answer always uses the verb from here. The first verb that we use to make the grammar point. In. And the last one, past perfect. The logic is the same uh, for the forms, but you have to remember the different words here. Had, and then uh, past participle, certified. Maybe this will help you more. All right. So uh, I did, I seen, I had seen. I can also write it as I had seen. I had seen uh, a lot before I came to China, for example. Než jsem se přestěhoval do Číny, tak už v té době jsem viděl toho hodně, ještě předtím, než jsem tam byl. To znamená, já jsem toho viděl dříve víc a potom jsem se přestěhoval do Číny. That's the idea. So, uh, don't forget that past perfect cannot stand alone in a sentence. Ve vědě skoro nikdy tento čas nestojí samostatně. Já potřebuji mít nějaký bod, od kterého se odpíchnu v minulosti a vím, že to, to co následovalo potom, nebo vlastně to, co následovalo předtím, to, co se stalo předtím, ve větě následuje. Takže já musím říct, yeah, I had seen, uh, seen a lot before. I'm not saying that I saw a lot. 
and then I move to China. I can also say that, but I need to change the board order. And uh, the negative, I did not see. You can also say I hadn't. I hadn't seen. The question would be, had you seen? So be careful because here, had you seen? Because here, don't forget that we keep this form. Unlike here, we have did you go? The past tense goes to the auxiliary verb. But here we have had you seen? Yes, I had. No, I hadn't. Seen must stay in questions and uh, the negative. So the, the past participle doesn't change. It still stays there, no matter what. All right, so if you have any questions about this, I know this can be a little bit tricky. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I will see whether you understand or not understand uh, in your exercises. So I'm looking forward to seeing your uh, exercises and uh, we will carry on after that. Thank you so much for listening.